Hi all, my name is Ormos. Uh, I lead a highly talented team of uh, security engineers at Vinted. At Vinted we uh, focus on making second hand the first choice and uh, scams and fraud is the, one of the biggest issues for us and uh, since uh, 2022 May I know nothing about the scammers and fraudsters and what we do, the infrastructure. Since the guy from Ukraine emailed us, he switched the sites because he previously was the scammer. He did a lot of fraudulent activities and uh, he wanted to switch the sites. So he shared some information, the forums and the telegram groups where to find those bad actors. And uh, this kicked off my uh, investigation. And today I want to share some insights how these activities are being handled using telegram and what tooling they have and how well it scales. So, uh, currently scammers are not those naive Nigerian princes. They are really organized, they have really tight uh, hierarchy, uh, at the top being the business owner, mostly there are one to three uh, persons. They uh, handle everything really for roughly, they have really uh, good developers who focus on uh, the tooling, on the handling all those telegram bots and whatnot. And uh, during the investigations I found that uh, those let's so called workers or workhorses, there are from 100 to 1,000 even more uh, human beings per team. And they do the, all the communications and they all do the uh, triggering the victims in order to get the uh, bank account information. All those administrators track the expenses. For them, this is a uh, regular business. They are pay for the uh, accountants, they pay for lawyers, for designers, for translators. We want those uh, scam messages to be really authentic. Uh, we found the information that we uh, paid for the Spanish uh, translator for uh, English one and uh, they also ran the office. They uh, uh, bought, bought uh, water, they bought uh, janitor services and similar for them. This is a uh, really legit business. Everything starts from uh, renting a scam bot uh, for a price of $50 a month. You can rent a full-blown uh, software as a service. This would be the Telegram bot, which would take all the necessary activities. I will show how, it's, uh, how it works a bit later. But the idea here is that uh, things like these are really affordable and uh, there's no you know, need technical knowledge or skills to, to start uh, handling activities like these. Then uh, after the uh, administrator acquires the scam as a service bot, he needs to find the workers. And for that, they use Telegram channels. They were uh, spam advertisements. In the first one, the team is called Los Polos, and they share that uh, by you know doing activities like these, you would be able to earn quite a lot in a short uh, amount of time, and you would be able to acquire like, a new car, uh, dream home, and similar. In the example on the right, they share the countries they will target, so for them uh, it's a matter of geolocation. Also they state that we have 24-7 uh, support, they have uh, really good manuals, so anyone can jump in and start right away. Also we are providing some information on uh, the uh, payouts we will give from the stolen amounts. Another thing is that uh, those teams share the uh, support, so they provide the uh, hours when we will have meetings, so we attempt to have those on a weekly basis. In this case, you see that this particular team uh, is based in uh, Ukraine and Russia also, so we have uh, meeting hours. They have uh, administrators who will help if necessary. The minimum amounts provide the information uh, of the money when the fraudsters will scamming activities. So in case you will share that you have 50 euros, we will not start scamming you because for them this is uh, business and we calculate the return on investment. Also we see the payouts, so in case 60% uh, means that the worker will get 60% of the stolen amount. Also uh, to encourage those scammers or workers, we do uh, monthly competitions, so we, with this we uh, try to motivate the scammers to do more to you know, work extra hours, and uh, if someone uh, reaches the biggest amount per month, uh, the, the scammer gets like, in this case, 2% of the total amount stolen per month. So competitions like these happen and they do it to motivate. Uh, another thing is the 
regular motivational messages in those uh, Telegram channels. So the administrators attempt to also motivate by sharing uh, images with monkeys, writing that your work uh, will convert to really good uh, profits and uh, yeah. And it seems that we already know about AI image driven uh, generations and tech generations, so we use already that. There's a plenty of uh, fraud manuals. In this case, uh, in the first column, we uh, provide the details for specific geolocations, what needs to be done and what works best and how to drive everything, the tooling and whatnot. In the second column, we provide the specific details on what to do in a specific platform, on how to start uh, inter interacting with those uh, clients or victims, uh, also on how to bypass message detections, uh, where to get uh, fake accounts and similar. There's also uh, Telegram bots for uh, fake shops. So in this case, there are uh, some of the bots which uh, mimic uh, fake drug shops, uh, fake uh, NFT investments, crypto mining, and also escort. So in this case, escort means that the scammers will impersonate the uh, women beings and we will trick the victims in order to later on blackmail them. Uh, the bland shop states that anyone can do it, even the Petya from sixth grade earned the first million. So by this way, we want to attract anyone who would be willing to work in this. They provide, as also mentioned previously, uh, lots of manuals, support, tooling, and also if someone does not have money, we provide the uh, promotions that you can start like with zero, and later on we will cover your expenses with uh, money you will steal. I also found a AI-based solution. Uh, the developer states that uh, using this tooling, it's possible just to upload the uh, scamming manual, like PDF file. The AI will train on itself and do all the heavy lifting. But I haven't found any, like you know, uh, real usage of it. It seems that this is still like a proof of concept, because there's no signs of it being used uh, for roughly. Uh, scammers pretty bad with the operational security. While recording those uh, scamming manuals uh, or, or writing PDF files and making screenshots, we provide some or we leave some of the clues in here. In this case, uh, Roma attempted to upload the image and this disclosed his identity. And this is pretty useful information during the uh, inter uh, collaboration with the law enforcement. Also, to start interacting uh, with the victims, we, we need accounts, and there are a bunch of Telegram channels and bots where scammers can acquire fake or compromised accounts. The price is really vary, but uh, there's uh, lots of capabilities to find useful stuff, and we acquire some of the compromised accounts from credential uh, leaks, uh, and uh, fake accounts are being registered, I must say. To find the new victims, there's also Telegram bots, uh, which the scammers call parsers. They scrape the uh, marketplace portals, uh, advertisement sites, in order to find the newly added uh, advertisements of the items. Uh, it's possible to rent this uh, software as a service for pretty low price. And finding the new newly added items, we track the uh, a bunch of metadata about the seller, and they use that information to start inter interacting with the victim. Another interesting thing in a Telegram is the fake uh, German ID generator. For the pretty low price of $7.50, it's possible to generate uh, fake IDs. And uh, in this case, uh, Andrea Kirsch is a person which does not exist. Each uh, generated document is uh, pretty unique, we uh, change the angles of the image, we change the shadows, the background, so each generated fake ID is pretty unique. There's a saying that there's no uh, honor among thieves, and when some buyer wants to buy something from the seller, let's say uh, account registrator, uh, fake accounts or whatnot, they uh, need to trust the seller. And for this, the new service appeared. This is called uh, BS Arbitrage Bot. So in this case, we provide the man in the middle or the service where the bot can uh, take the money. And if the seller will be happy, it will provide a transfer to the uh, seller. Same with the human being. But the uh, 
10% would be taken for that service. So it's possible to also use this and scammers use these to buy uh, shady stuff. They also have a so-called scam court. This is also dedicated uh, Telegram channel where if scammer would be scammed by another scammer, he could be able to complain and others uh, would be able to provide the uh, proofs that uh, they acquired like fake accounts, those accounts are being uh, blocked and it's not possible to use them or for example account registrator does not work or bypass some something what is being um, said. So in this case uh, they can report others and others will not buy stuff. So trust means a lot in these channels. I want to briefly mention, uh, mention how scam uh, is being named in, in those uh, scammer uh, communities they call themselves as Nendertals and the victims are being called Mammuts. So this is uh, naming conventions we use across the collaboration and communication. And uh, Nendertals start with the phishing toolkit which, which is a Telegram bot and uh, when the worker starts interacting with that uh, bot is greeted with the panel like this. This is in Russian, but the idea here that the scammer can start generating the phishing site by just clicking a button in Telegram bot. Then the scammer is greeted with the selection of the countries. So in this case, uh, the scammer can select the country he would like to start uh, scamming activities in. Uh, I selected Germany, then I'm greeted with the four services which I can impersonate in that particular uh, country. Selecting Vinted greets me with uh, another uh, dialogue where I need to enter the URL of the item from the market list portal and the bot will take all the heavy lifting. It will parse the information about the item, it will take the image and it will generate automatically the uh, phishing site. Using also this Telegram bot is possible to send emails to the victim. So there are free email services. It's also possible to use short message services. So it's possible to send short message uh, messages to the victims. It's also possible to generate QR code and also possible to enable or disable the account balance checker. I'll tell a bit about it later. Also it's possible to change the price and everything. So it's also really interactive stuff. Then the scammer has the phishing site, uh, he needs to deliver the message, message somehow to the victim. And there are three options for that, email, short messages or QR codes. And uh, most of the scammers know that the spam detection or email uh, gateways will detect the phishing links and whatnot, so for that we use redirectors. They try to leave the uh, mistakes in the email text in, in, in the hopes that the, uh, you know, the, the Mistakes will uh, allow them to bypass uh, message detection and, and similar things. The QR codes are pretty uh, high quality. In this case, free brands are being abused and we uh, use these um, persistently because this allows them to bypass the email detections and uh, get the phishing site landed in the victim. When the, the, uh, when the victim is being tricked, uh, the victim lands in the phishing site, which looks and feels really to what, for example, Vinted uh, offers, and uh, the brand logo, the color coding, and similar is really unique, and uh, for that we also uh, attempt to use the subdomains. So in most cases we register one uh, phishing domain, and for the impersonated services we use uh, subdomains. The balance check is uh, used uh, twofold. So, as mentioned previously, if the victim will state that um, it has, uh, let's say, uh, 50 euros, the scamming activities will not start. And also, by providing the account uh, balance, the victim thinks that uh, they provide the they uh, provide uh, as a second factor authentication. So, for scammers, uh, this information is pretty useful, and the victim thinks that this is, you know. I know that how much money I, know, I have, and this proves that uh, I'm authenticating to the legitimate bank. Uh, then each of these phishing sites have a uh, so-called support, and the victim, uh, by entering the text, all the text appears in the same Telegram bot. Those scammers mostly read uh, Russian texts, and they don't understand, uh, let's say, other languages. For that, they use Deepul. They uh, 
write the answer in Deepal, we, in Russian, we translate it to the victim's language, and we interact with that chat from the Telegram bot. It's possible for them to not, you know, leave the Telegram bot. When the, there are dedicated channels uh, for the information about stolen amounts of money, so those are private channels where the uh, so-called uh, beavers or, or the administrators lurk in, and they uh, track the information which service was impersonated, the amount stolen, how much money the worker will get, and uh, the payouts for workers vary from 35 to 75 percent of the stolen amount. If the worker uses the mentor services, uh, he will need to pay from 5 to 10 percent, and the mentor in this case is the person who knows how to do the you know scamming work in that particular location or uh, how to impersonate the specific service best. So the mentor can train the worker to be more you know uh, sophisticated. The, the tech support is the uh, email short message or QR code generation services. So worker would also need to pay for that. And there's also in all the teams the fixed amount of 5% of stolen amount for the email or short message services if worker would be using that. I script some of those uh, payment channels to, to get a better understanding of how much money they earn per month or so. As you can see, for example, Air Team uh, in one month managed to earn almost uh, 550K. So some teams start and disband after like a year or so. Or some teams run for three years and they even exceed even more. So for them, this is legit business. I shared my insights with the Europol Impact team and some uh, European police representatives. We uh, collaborate, we exchange information. This is really useful for them to fight the fraud and scam uh, across the Europe. I also interact with Global Scam Alliance, uh, digital crimes community uh, led by Microsoft, and also uh, Cybercrime Atlas initiative uh, owned by World Economic Forum. So together we uh, attempt to uh, make the bad guys cry. Thank you. Thank you. Any? Hi. Uh, great presentation. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, is because I'm ignorant, who pays for the SMS services? Is it the, the, the scammers? Does that cost them money? Can that be of use to reduce their income? And the other is, has someone tried already to use the, the actual translation services to try to track down the, the, the criminal activities as they are translating the, the, the scams? So re regarding short messages, yes. They, they, they use those uh, SMS as a service, uh, like uh, third parties. So, uh, so it's possible, you know, to send bunch of those messages and increase the cost for them. That's possible. But what we use, we use uh, those bots to generate the phishing uh, domains and we submit those domains to domain registrars, Google C browsing, in order to, you know, burn their infrastructure and uh, that, that's how we attempt to increase the costs and make it more complicated for them. And uh, what was the second part? Sorry. To use the translation services to track activity. And personally, I don't know about that. I saw that we use Deepool for everything. So. Yeah, but that we use that, you know, because they only read and uh, speak Russian, so for them, the Czech, Polish, or simulates, they don't understand what's happening, but we use that for roughly. So maybe we would need to, you know, talk with Deepul. Yeah. Um, great talk. Um, thanks. Um, uh, two questions. One is like, while analyzing that, did you did you come across like um, ideas how to disincentivize them financially? Like what mechanisms do we need, like maybe on a political level, to stop money flows? Uh, that's one question. The second question is like, do you think this, since they, you know, do follow the playbook, like Trey just said, like, um, would it be easy to replace them by AI agents and speed up the process? Yeah, so uh, we interacted with that, um Ex scammer from Ukraine, and he mentioned that if he would have like legit uh, job, he would not be doing that. This so for them, this is you know lack of work, and that's the reason why we do this. Uh, for the uh, 
regarding AI, yeah, my you know my uh, fear is that the AI will replace those uh, workers because AI will be able to scrape the uh, marketplace portals. It will be possible to build the sentiment about the victim and to prepare a really targeted uh, message. So yeah, the the future the future it seems it might be like you know not that bright regarding the AI and scams. Because scammers, yeah, they don't don't sit. They they're not naive. They are like, you know, for them this is like really a legitimate business. Uh, I believe that you know they are not paying taxes, but we rent offices. We you know buy for like janitors, uh, accountants, translators, whatnot, designers. The screen where you could pick which country you wanted to scam in, like people have preferences. There's a lot of bias there. I've long thought that there's a big element of depersonalization in cybercrime, right? And if I was like a big company, say like MasterCard, just to pick on one, no offense to MasterCard, but like if I looked and I said, I'm being scammed, broadly speaking, and my customers from these are the top five countries. If you then went and put like a delivery center or some kind of like decent quality jobs in that place, I think you'd see a marked decrease in your targeting from there because suddenly attackers would be like, yeah, but my aunt works there. You know, like that it would repersonalize the brand and reduce the target factor. But your point is right. You've got to create good jobs so that the scammers have an alternative. So what we understood, we understood that it will be a you know, cat and mouse game, uh, but what KPI for us is to, to make those uh, activities for scammers expensive. So by you know burning those domains, by like, reporting what we discover, uh, and by reading those uh, worker chats, we understand where you know we hit them hard. So where you know the pain points of for them. So I think that's the one of the may, uh, cases we can. Uh, fight this, because scams will stay here, with AI it will only will increase, because it will be more like, you know, uh, affordable to do the activities like these, and, uh, you know, one developer driving AI tool will be capable to do it. So I think, you know, the, our neighbors in the East, in Ukraine and in Russia, they, as mentioned previously, for them, they don't have like legitimate jobs and they focus on activities like these. This is their legitimate job right now. For them, yes, but not for us. No, but they still, they still know that it's evil. You know. Yes, because in forums, they, there are three tiers, like uh, black jobs, uh, gray ones, and the white ones. And these, like, scamming activities, they are, like, you know, in the black category. Fold. So they are aware what we are doing. It's, you know, well known for them. Hi. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, my question is, on what level are the organizers themselves, um, what techniques are they using to hide their identity? And I imagine on some level, the workers themselves are victims, and they maybe blackmail them or try and keep their identity from the workers, um, just to keep them there, keep them in the service. So how do they sort of stay anonymous um, from the main victim, the, the mammoths, if you will, and from the workers, what do they do? So, uh, one thing is that uh, to, to join the scammers team, you need to answer four questions. And also, you need to provide the proof that you did something and you get a payout. So, for that, I crafted one. Uh, like, uh, you need to provide a screenshot, answer four questions. So, that's how we filter those who would be, like, you know, willing to do the scamming activities. Another thing is that uh, what we observed, they uh, use the TOR, we use VPNs, we uh, hide their identities. They also, the phishing sites only accessible for like uh, some specific geolocation. So if you would be coming from like a data center IP, the phishing site would not be accessible. They attempt to, you know, uh, limit the access or geofence. So they, they are aware of, we also use the Cloudflare and, and similar services. So lots of stuff, fake personas, and they wouldn't just be able to bypass that with the VPN. So, like, if you're using a VPN to talk to them automatically, they filter you out. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
they were what, what we're doing, and some of them, uh, at least like on the lower tiers, are pretty bad with operational security due to like rush and similar. But those at the top tiers, like uh, business owners, uh, administrators, are really sophisticated, and uh, it's. You know, you, in order to get into those circles, you need to be like, you know, uh, really uh, familiar with them to build the trust. So, yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, just one question. Uh, what kind of type of scams do they uh, actually do? You described the phishing campaigns, but do they do like uh, investment scams, calling, call centers, etc.? We had yesterday on that presentation that implicating that that calling and, and investment scams also come from similar actors from the same country. So now the focus shifts to uh, crypto scams. There are a bunch of uh, Telegram bots to generate like uh, white papers and you know shit coins and similar. So now we uh, focus on like uh, NFTs and crypto because uh, people are willing to invest in those goods. And uh, now instead of like you know doing scamming activities in like e-commerce portals and similar, they are focusing more like on cryptocurrencies. But do they actually have like call centers calling people? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, my, you know, uh, investigations uh, were like around the Telegram, what, how we use this service to drive their, uh, you know, activities. So I'm not aware if they have any, like, you know, call centers or, or similar. We have like a lot of reports from our constituency uh, that uh, the people that they are uh, contacted by such a scammers, they all have like Eastern European accents. Yes, I, mean, I coming from the Slavic country, so they, it's notable. That's why. Yes. So we. Suppose, presumably, that they are from the Ukraine or from the Russia. That's why I'm asking. So, you know, I, I could generalize that those um, scammers from Ukraine and Russia, they focus on, like, uh, scamming activities or fraud. Uh, the guys from Eastern or Western Europe focus on refunds, mostly. As we observed, there are a bunch of manuals written on how to, for example, get uh, refunds from the Uber Eats and, and similar services. And we also found... Uh, uh, team in China, where we uh, used uh, uh, people in UK for the like uh, shipping yeah. uh, activities. Yeah, so different regions focus on different uh, you know fraud scenarios. Thank you. That might be it. Thanks. No, wait. <laughs>